Shalom, and I give all undergoing praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakakodash, and I give double honors to our apostles and elders, great millstone, salutations to our sincere Aki, I'm pushing this word out across the four corners of the world. And as you're seeing a video from Boston Dynamics, which is an American engineering and robotics design company, and they create robots with advanced mobility and intelligence. And now lately in the news, you're seeing this robotic doll army over there in China. And that just further proves how this is a new world order, this global reset. And this so-called pandemic is just the beginning of things to further urge this new world order. Because these elites of Esau, Edom, which are the so-called Caucasian race today, they know how these people are going to start protesting, rioting. Things are going to get very ugly and chaotic here in America. So with that being said, they are gearing up their soldiers and more so these robotic dog military. And all this goes back to the blessing of Esau Edom. And this is the account of it in the book of Genesis, the 27th chapter, the 38th verse, because the word Genesis means the beginning. So for us to know why these things are happening in the end, which we are in the last days, we have to know what happened in the beginning for Esau Edom. To have this type of power nowadays. And this is Genesis 27 verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing? My father, bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. So the fatness of the earth represents these plush, fertile places where Esau dwells in. That's why they have the best of everything as far as living conditions, which goes back to the blessing that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, put the spirit upon our forefather, Isaac, to bless Esau with. And that blessing still carries on to this very day. And here's the point in verse 40. And by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So that sword goes back into Esau's blessing, dealing with his military his nuclear weaponry, his guns. And now you're seeing the news with this robotic doll army, which further leads me to the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter in the fourth verse. And there went out another horse that was red, and that horse represents power. And as you know, that's what Edom means, red. So Esau has that power right now given to him by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, going back to that blessing that we just read in the book of Genesis, the 27th chapter. And also, as it says in the book of Job 9, 24, how the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. So right now, the power, the strength, the ability is given to the nobility of Esau, Edom, to control this earth for a certain point in time. So that's why it says, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth. Because right now, with the inhabitants of the earth right now, it's defiled. And that they should kill one another. And it was given to him a great sword. And the book of Revelation is the last book of the Holy Bible. And that's how you know that Esau Edom will be in control of the earth before Yahweh Shai's second return. So that further proves that, as it says in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, that Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So Esau Edom is going to be in rulership right now. And that's why we're seeing all his different miracles that he's showcasing to the world right now. Dealing with his blessing. In the beginning. And this is Genesis 27 40. And by thy sword shall thou live. So that's why Esau is so blessed and specialized into knowing about these different guns, swords. Had the ability to know how to deal with this nuclear technology and weaponry. And as you can see in today's news. Uh, he's becoming more creative, involving with these robotic dogs. And all that's going to be used for the sword. Because I ran into an article, it was going into how these robotic dogs are going to be specialized into military combat drills. So what you think that's going to lead to? There's going to be a lot of bloodshed, which goes right back to Esau's blessing, the sword. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So if Esau felt like this for his brother Jacob, how much more his inheritance 
feeling like that for the children of Israel, especially in this day and time where the tabernacle of Edom began with these elites. They are seeing that great spiritual awakening happen amongst our people coming back into who they really are as the biblical Israelites. And we come into that vibration by calling upon Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. And by that spiritual great awakening, we're becoming like a threat to Esau's rulership, which leads me to the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter and the 12th verse. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil, going back to that serpent, which is Esau, Edom. The scriptures say in the book of Revelation how he's going to deceive the whole world with his democracy, his ideologies, his philosophies, his legislations. So he's that great deceiver. And everybody's coming to the realization who that deceiver is, who the devil is. So for the devil, it's come down to you having great wrath because he knew it that he had but a short time. So you go into the word great. Strong's G, 3173, Magus. Magus. It says Magus. And as you can see right here, it says great, mass and weight, great. And the point right here. It says right here, of God's preeminent blessings, which goes right back to the blessing that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, put the Spirit upon our forefather Isaac to bestow that blessing of the fatness of the earth and a sword unto his son Esau. So that's of God's preeminent blessings. So it says back in Revelation 12 and 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down to you having great wrath. Because he knew it that he had but a short time. So let's get that word wrath in the Greek. Strong's G 2372. Thumas. 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 And it says passion, angry, heat, anger for with boiling up and soon subsiding again. So that's the spirit that Yahweh Bashem Yahushua is going to pour upon Esau Edom. His vessel of wrath fitted for destruction. But before he does that, Esau has to play out his role. And by that, that's by coming down upon our people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, who are the biblical Israelites, with that great wrath. So he's going to be like a mad man sparing none, as it says in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. And that word short for Revelation, the 12th chapter and 12th verse, how it says that he know that he has but a short time, that goes into Aligas, which means light. So that leads up with the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter, the 23rd verse, how it says, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. So Esau's shine, his blessing, his prosperity, is not going to be a forever thing. So this is the book of Isaiah 10 and 5, or Assyria. In the modern day of Assyria, it's representing the tabernacle of Edom, the rod of my anger. So a rod is something like a whipping stick. So Yahweh Bashim al Shah set up Esau Edom only for them to be our whipping stick for us breaking that binding agreement, that contract that we made with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the laws, statutes, and commandments. So he used his vessel of dishonor, the basis of men, to be that rod of the Most High's anger. And the staff in their hand is my end of nation. So by Yahweh, by Shem al giving Esau that green light, and as you can see, he's moving real fast. And this is something that's just off the surface with these robotic dogs. Because with Boston Dynamics, they did a video like this like 10 years ago. So that's what they just showcase and just playing around with. It's no telling what Esau really has behind closed doors. But in these last days, we definitely going to see what Esau been withholding for all these years. So, O oh, Syrian, the rod of my anger and the staff in their hand is my inner nation. Verse 6, I will send him against a hypocritical nation. And that's talking about the two-thirds of the nation of Israel. The ones of our people that are settled here in America and wherever they are scattered to in the four corners of the world. They don't want to see a new earth, a new heaven wherein dwelling in righteousness. They totally comfortable here. So they're not in that spirit of repentance unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. They'd rather be these servants and slaves under the umbrella of Esau's rulership. But they want to claim that they love the Heavenly Father, but they don't want to do the things that's within the scriptures. So that's a hypocritical people. Those are nothing but actors. And it says, and he gets the people of my wrath where I give him a charge. So Yahweh Bashim al is going to appoint Esau. He's going to command Esau to come down upon our people with that great wrath. 
And the most high is going to allow Esau to tap into that ancient spirit. As we read in the book of Genesis, the 27th chapter, how it says, Then shall I slay my brother Jacob. So the most high is going to fuel that passion of anger into Esau's inheritance, these Edomites. And you best believe that Esau himself is back here today in the reincarnation. He could, he could definitely be one of these banking elites, starting with the Rothschilds. So it says, I will send him against a hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath where I give him a charge to take the spoil, to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. And this is all going to the time of Jacob's trouble. Pursuant to the book of Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, the 7th verse, Daniel, the 12th chapter, the 1st verse. Well, this is going to be a time that we have never seen before. So you can just think about the times that we went through in ancient Egypt, all these other different ancient captivities that they put much hell upon us as a people, the transatlantic slave trade. Then when we came onto the shores of the different Americas and across the four corners of the world as well, and we had to go through all that lynching and slavery, things of that such, and post-slavery as well. So all those times are not going to be compared to the time that's coming, which is the time of Jacob's trouble, where it's going to be trouble upon two-thirds of the nation of Israel, which don't want to come back unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh So it says, and to take the prey to tread them down like the mire of the streets. And these robotic dogs that they have can definitely be one of those tools that the Most High is going to put the spirit upon Esau even to use upon our people. They can set up a false flag event and you know how our people love to protest and riot. And they can have those robotic dolls out there because they are specialized in military combat drills. So as you see through the spirit, a lot of our people are going to die in these last days. The scriptures also say that the slain of the Lord should be many. This is the book of Isaiah 59 verse 19. So should they fear the name of the Lord from the west over here in the so-called western hemisphere and his glory from the rising of the sun over there in the east. So this is all biblical prophecy of that spiritual great awakening happened amongst the elect of the Israelites. It says in the book of Baruch, the fifth chapter and the fifth verse, how old Jerusalem stand on high. And look about toward the east, and behold thy children gather from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One. So that's that spiritual great awakening. So that's going to urge these elites to go ahead and come down with that great wrath. And it says, when the enemy should come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord should lift up a standard against him. So dealing with our main enemy, according to the book of Psalm of the 83rd chapter, starting with Esau, Edom, and these other nations. These different foreign troops that are going to be over here, these Gurga troops. And also don't forget these robotic dog military. So when the enemy should come in like a flood, that word flood, it goes into like a stream. That's how deep Esau is going to be with his different soldiers, this military. It says in the book of Psalm 124 that the proud waters have gone over our soul. So that's the enemy coming in like a flood. And the spirit of the Lord should lift up a standard against him. So as to hopefully let, the only way that we can be able to combat that is by spiritual power. Some type of divine intervention. And that's by Yahweh Bashem Yahushua bestowing that righteous spiritual powers upon his elect. Because what we're seeing, how the Most High is going to give Esau that charge, that's going to be spiritual powers on that left hand side. But we know that Yahweh Bashem Yahushua is a perfect balance. So he's going to deal with his lit on the right hand side to have their spiritual powers to combat Esau's military when they come in with that great wrath. And that's a cut for any one of our people trying to bear arms and take down Esau. I'm going right back into that word great Magos in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, the 12th verse. It goes into of God's preeminent blessings. So that's the doings of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his unbegotten son, Yahweh Shai, that set up Esau to be in control of this earth and have that wicked standard amongst this earth and to rule in wickedness. And the only powers that can be able to take Esau out of this rulership is Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's how you know that Yahweh Shai was Isaac because Isaac set up Esau for this rulership. For him to have the fatness of the earth to do a heaven and the sword. And coming back into Yahweh Shai as himself, he's going to take Esau out of his rulership. That's why Yahweh Shai stated that he's going to put down all rule. And it goes into also how it's going to be many crowns upon his head. So we keep doing what we're doing. We good. We have nothing to worry about. And this is Jeremiah 51 verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. 
Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. So what kingdom are we in right now? The extension of that fourth beast of the Roman Empire, and that's trickling on down to America, known as Babylon the Great, where the tabernacle of Edom is in rulership. So Yahweh Bashim is going to bestow that spiritual power on the right-hand side of his elect to come back that spiritual power on his left hand, vessel of dishonor, dealing with Esau Edom. So we do have spiritual aid. And that's from our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And further prove that, this is 2 Maccabees, the 15th chapter, and the 6th verse. And this is the time of the Greek Empire, when the Greeks were trying to come down with our people. So Nicanor, in exceeding pride and haughtiness, determined to set up a public monument of his victory over Judas and them that were with him. But Maccabeus had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, hence martial law. But to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven, and now to expect the victory and aid which come unto them from the Almighty. So just think on back the times that we really needed Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, and they came for us. Back in ancient Egypt, in the different trials and tribulations that the ancient prophets was going through, they was delivered. And they did have to suffer death. They suffer in righteousness. And they have a crown waiting upon them by keeping their faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. So how much more the end of the end days? So that's what we should expect through the spirit as the hopefully let, which is that victory and aid that should come unto us from the Almighty. Verse 9, and so comforting them out of the law and the prophets, and withal putting them in the mind of the battles that they won afore, he made them more cheerful. So how much more in the times that we know and we can see and feel that this so-called white man is going down? It says in the book of Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, about because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. We in that transition phase right now. So that's good that the Most High is putting that spirit upon Esau Edom to gear up his different robotic dog military and just up his nuclear weaponry, all these different tactics and devices that he has. Because the sooner that he does that, the sooner that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is going to checkmate him. He's only using Esau Edom to be fitted for that wrath of destruction, to carry out biblical prophecy so the Heavenly Father Yahweh sin, Yahweh shall to come back and upset Esau's new world order plans. Then the kingdom is going to be given to the righteous of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So Lord willing with that, you all is edified, you all stay strong, shalom.